Your call has been forwarded to an automatic voice message system. Matt Horn is not available. At the tone, please record your message. When you have finished recording, you may hang up or press 1 for more options. If I leave now, that darkness will just come back here. I can't let that happen. Uh, hey Matt, uh, just giving you a call. Guess you didn't pick up, so... You know, I, I heard you wanted to talk to me about Concrete Genie a little bit. That'd be super awesome. Just get back to me, let me know. Please call me back. Cool, thanks. So on the line, we have Simon Lathrop talking to us from... Where are you talking to us from, Simon? I'm talking to you guys from California. Oh, you're going to tell me it's sunny where you are, aren't you? For the last, like, two weeks, it's been pretty sunny, and then the last couple of days it's dropped down, but it's probably not as bad as where you are right now. <laughs> yes, it's sort of raining where I am. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, definitely, definitely sunnier here. I mean, have you ever been to the UK at all? No, I haven't. I really want to go, though. It's nice. The weather's different. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, the reason why we're here... I'm going to start off by going a bit different with this interview. I will say I knew about this game at the start of October, more or less when it was released, and then I actually played it at a comic con, would you believe? Oh, nice. Mm. And <laughs> and obviously I thought this is this is interesting, and and I'll get onto the reasons why. And then obviously I heard about you doing the interview, and I said, right, I'm going to have to go out and buy it. Because obviously I need to need to have background on it. My God, it's a good game, isn't it? Yeah, my dad got really excited and bought it the first day I got to play, like an hour or two. It's insane. The artwork's super cool in that game. Now, obviously, we're talking about Concrete Genie. Yeah, yeah. It's a bit of an independent game, I, I would say. I mean, it's it's definitely as good as the PS4 games currently out there. I think personally. But the interesting thing is, isn't it great? It's a game where there's no guns. Yeah. Ash is more of a pacifist, I think, and he doesn't need to solve his problems with, like, brute force. He can, like, talk his way out of things, and he can get to know them better. And it's it's cool that they show that there's a way of defending yourself and standing up for yourself without, like, beating someone up or, like, hurting someone. Hmm. I mean, obviously, one of the main themes, I would say, is bullying. And, yeah. And obviously, I'm not going to spoil plot line here, but in the first, I think it's, like, five, ten minutes of the game, it's essentially Ash yourself sitting on a side of a um a pier isn't it it's kind of like a pier and yeah obviously you've got a scrapbook and you're sort of doing you know sketches and drawings of these characters and then these bullies basically take your scrapbook don't they and then rip it up and yeah. throw away the pieces and i thought that was really distressing i thought for <laughs> game but that made it look like you were painting on painting on walls for that first five minutes was a bit like up you know, it's a bit sort of oh you know where's this going exactly and then of course there is a there is a bit more to it and then you sort of go to a lighthouse and then one of your pictures comes to life essentially it's lunar isn't it it, come, it comes to life yeah. and then it's it's a bit of a, a sort of adventure of repainting the town almost in in different scenery whilst you're also having to deal with the bullies at the same time yeah I'd say the bullies are definitely more interactive than I thought when I was recording. I didn't realize how much, like, you need to get the bullies out of one place so you can open a gate to get through to a new area. And I didn't realize. I thought that was really cool. How even though it's, like, definitely is about the painting and bringing the town back to life, they did implement the bullies, like, more than I thought they would at least. So, obviously, I need to ask, ask the general obvious question. What was production of the game like for you? I thought it was really fun. That was my first, like, big project, and going in and recording for, like, four hours, I was thrilled the whole time. Even the barks, just, like, the little, like, hey, come over here, man, and just, like, the, ugh, I thought that was so cool. I had so much fun being in the booth with the headphones on, and everyone was super nice on the team, and it was it was super cool. I'm going to ask a sort of, not dangerous question, it's not really dangerous, but you'll see where I'm going with it. <laughs> Obviously, it's a, it's a story about bullies. Obviously, you're playing the main character. How did you sort of get into that character? I'm fortunate enough to not have been bullied in my youth. I had a really good friend group. 
very supportive, but I've had friends who were picked on. And so I kind of put myself into their shoes and I would try to like feel what they were feeling, but also kind of empathy because he realizes that it's not all their fault that they're, they're bullies and they're this way. So I tried, I tried to just like use examples of both scenarios and put them into one and like get into that headspace before I'd record. Obviously it's come out. We know it's come out because we're talking about it. What's the reception been like for you? A lot of people are enjoying it, I think, and it's touching people more than most video games. Like it has a message, and I think it's I think it's getting pretty positive reviews. I wish it was a bigger game. I wish more people knew about it. I'm guessing your friends know about it. You've obviously yeah. told everybody that you're in this game. <laughs> it's like I'm in this game. You're like oh, what? Oh, oh. <laughs> and my friends are like, it's a cool game, but it's really weird hearing your voice all the time. I do have to go on about funny anecdotes. So, are there any sort of funny stories you can share about the production of the game? Let's see. There was a recording session where they were like, yeah, we wanted to try this, like, ad-libbing. They would play gameplay, and I would, like, ad-lib over it. And there's a <laughs> there's a mechanic where if you get too close to the bullies, they throw you in a dumpster. And so what happened was they'd keep throwing ash in the dumpster, like, in the gameplay. And at one point at the very end... Right, this was the end of like a four-hour recording session. I was just like, "Ha, home sweet home." And we got in the dumpster, and everyone laughed super hard, and it messed up the recording, but it was really funny. I don't know if they used it, but it was it was a great time. Mm. It was really funny. Mm. I mean, it's it's probably like a deleted scene or something. I don't know. I don't have the capability of doing it, but I know it, it's part of the the game, the VR bit. Oh yeah. If you've got VR goggles and you've got the motion controllers, you can actually do it properly as in you can do it as if you were a painter if you were ash doing it that's interesting i think that that's clever i mean obviously i've got the motion controller so yeah i've got the dual shot four so i can move move it through that way but obviously if you've got the vr it adds a certain better i don't know gameplay dimension to it yeah we were thinking about getting a vr just for this game I feel like it'd be more immersive and you'd be, like, in the story. I really want to try that sometime if one of my friends had a VR. I'll bring the game over to his house and I'll let you know. I have to talk about game adaptations into films. Okay. Mm. You know where this is going, hopefully. I think so. I <laughs> yeah. Think so. If they turned around to you now and said, well, obviously the story's great and we think it's got the potential to be turned into a Hollywood film, would you be interested in reprising the role absolutely it's one of my favorite like characterizations and i think it would be a really really cool movie i think it would be i think it'd be fun i don't know if i'd be able to do the live action my hair is not quite as long as ashes but i'm sure if they really wanted me they could figure something out i would love to do that because mm. obviously they do change actors when they adapt it so obviously you'd have to yeah potentially look at that as being a possibility i don't know who they would choose i would presume somebody around the same age but obviously with the sort of the the idea that this young adult can paint on the walls, they they might not even have Denska. They could have just done it in Paris or London, potentially. Yeah, that'd be pretty mm. cool. Mm. That'd be pretty cool too. And I do have to obviously <laughs> ask the question, because <laughs> everybody's wondering, I think, what's going to happen. Is there a possibility of a Concrete Genie too? Oh, jeez. <laughs> Last time I was there... I remember them saying, like, okay, we're almost done, we're almost done. We're going to release it, and then we get a break for, like, a week, and then they have to, like, redo everything. And I don't know. They never mentioned anything about a Concrete Genie 2. I really hope so. That would be pretty cool. I don't know. Because I'm just thinking, if they did do a Concrete Genie 2, I'll give an example. Remy LaBeouf, I know you probably don't know who Remy LaBeouf is, was a child actor who did the original Zone of the Enders, and then about 10 or so years later, he reprised the role as an older version of the character. And I'm just thinking with Concrete Genie 2, if they have, say, for example, a, a new younger character, it would make sense to bring your character back as an older version, potentially in university, potentially as a successful you know, painter or artist, maybe. I don't know. That'd be really cool. If they do make a second one, I hope they give me a call. Mm. And I, I'm in it some way or another. And of course, obviously, we need to mention, we do need to mention about the fact that a large proportion of the game is the idea of old, derelict environments. Yeah, it's like a wonderful sort of 
I think he's talking to his parents and you see sort of like how it used to be before it became derelict. Yeah. Yeah. And I think I think that's that's a great great little piece of the um puzzle I suppose of, of the game is the the idea that you know it's an old derelict place and with paint and creativity it comes back almost. Yeah, I think I think it was cool how they changed animation for like the style that they used. I think it made it feel definitely like you were saying, like an older kind of feel. Well, I do have to say something before we go on. Before we go on, Simon, because if I don't, then me and you are going to get in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> don't graffiti. <laughs> no, no, no. I won't. I wasn't planning on it. No, no, I didn't mean you specifically. I meant people in general. Oh. Yeah, don't don't use the game as a way of thinking. Oh, I can just go. <laughs> you know. They're making the town better, I swear. I listened to Simon's interview and I thought, no, I'll go out and, <laughs> and do them. No. If you do have the landowner's permission, then by all means. But unfortunately, it is a criminal offence if it's not yours. <laughs> yeah. I am just putting it out there to cover you and me. <laughs> Thank you. So, Simon, let's talk a bit about you. You yourself. We're at the start of okay. a very promising career, I think with you i hope so mm. i really hope so what made you want to get into the industry in the first place how long ago so in 2015 so I, i'm a dancer and we had a student who um my mom's the owner of the studio and there was a student whose uncle owned an acting studio in a town that was kind of near ours and i <laughs> i was like i was hoping to make some pocket cash is there any way that i could get a job even though i'm like 13 or 12 she was like, well, you can try acting. So we went down there and we got headshots and all that stuff. And I was like, I'm, I'm only going to do one thing. I don't know if I'm going to like this. But I ended up falling in love with it and I've been doing it ever since. What advice would you give to any young adults wanting to get into the industry? My advice would be keep putting yourself out there. Uh, be patient. You're not going to get – you're not necessarily going to get your first job. You're not necessarily going to get your 20th job. If you truly feel passionate about it, keep pushing for roles. Just keep enjoying yourself and, and really don't don't act fake around people. They want to hire you. They want you to be like natural and as long as you work hard, you'll be good. Which actors would you like to work with? Oh, I, I think Channing Tatum, just because I feel like I feel similar to him in a way because he has like a dancing background and he's he's a really good actor I, I like Channing Tatum a lot I think he's really funny who else um maybe like The Rock just because he's so big and I, I I remember liking him a long long time ago and watching him forever so those are probably my two that I want to I'd, I'd want to do a role with do a movie with or something with regards to roles see where we're going now what kind of roles <laughs> would you like to do I do enjoy comedy and then like horror movies like i filmed an independent movie a long time ago and i got to like dress up as a zombie and i thought it was really cool and so i'd say like yeah it's two very different genres but comedies and horror movies is definitely something that i would like to do in the future if i get the opportunity not the villain maybe yeah i mean that would be fun too but probably not the villain no i was gonna say marvel or dc because i'm guessing you must be into that oh yeah <laughs> yeah oh yeah like, if I got to pick one of those, what would I want to be? Definitely Marvel. Okay. And I'd probably want to be, like, Spider-Man. I watched, like, what they actually did with him in, like, the green screen before they animated it, and they actually are throwing Tom Holland around. It's pretty cool. I would love to do that sometime. Well, obviously, to throw it on back to gaming again, you've got the film aspect and the gaming aspect. Do you want to sort of continue on both streams, or do you want to sort of navigate to one more so? No, I enjoy both. They're very different, but I feel joy when I'm doing both of them, and I, I really like I really like both lines of work and voiceovers in general. It's two different animals. I think I would like to continue doing both. It's easier for my mom with voiceovers because I can just record it on my computer and send it away when we live like three hours away from wherever we always have to do auditions. So when I'm older, I, I think it would be easier, and I would like to do more live action roles, but in the meantime, I think voiceover work and a little bit of... TV and film work is good. Because mm. obviously I'm thinking with the gaming aspect, nowadays they use stuff like mocap, you know, and the suits and the balls and the 
headgear mm. and the cameras. I'm just thinking, you know, given a film background. That's true. That would be cool. Mm. That would be awesome. Yeah. Those look like fun. Those suits. I mean, that's where we're going now. VR and mocap suits, and it's just going to be avatars yeah. and whatnot. <laughs> twenty years ago, Simon. Twenty years ago. I would tell you some stories about 20 years ago when we had to wait for about two minutes to get a dial-up tone for the internet. Nowadays, it's just, you know... (laughs) Bing, you know. Crazy stuff. Exactly. So I'm going to give you a one-minute plug. Uh, I'm going to give you a one-minute plug to plug, obviously, Concrete Genie. I am also, before you do that, going to touch a bit on Apparation, which has been completed, which is fine. Yeah. So we can talk about it. Yeah. I can't see any knowledge of when it's coming out, though. That's interesting. Might look into that a bit more. But, obviously, you're in it. Yes. Yes. I filmed that in seventh seventh grade. Baby Simon. <laughs> Baby Simon? <laughs> Baby Simon, yeah. I, I remember looking back, and I thought I was doing a great job, but I had my eyes all scrunched at some point. It was great. I thought, I thought it was such a fun experience for, like, my first big-ish role, but it was cool. This is pre, pre-Concrete pre Genie, isn't it? We recorded Concrete Genie a year and a half ago, I think. Two years ago. So my voice has even changed since then. I don't even know if I'd be able to do Ash 2 in the next one. But <laughs> this was pre-Concrete Genie, and that was seventh grade. We filmed in this like old castle, and it was like actually where it was, and it was super cool. The only thing I didn't like was I had to shave my head. <laughs> but it grew back, so it's good. Well, obviously, as I said, I'm going to give you a one-minute plug. Two plug... Why people should buy Concrete Genie. Okay. I think you guys should buy Concrete Genie because it's different than any video game I've ever played. It's very it's very immersive. You feel more attached to characters and Ash and the, the pages and the notebook and the brushes and getting to the next place to paint. I think like it hits it hits more in your heart than most games. It's definitely a game that you can do what you want and still have fun while still following a plot line. You can go around and paint whatever you want. It's very freeing. The game is very, like, light and airy, but it still sends a good message, and I think you all should go out right now if you have a PS4 and buy Concrete Genie. I'd agree. (laughs) (laughs) But I've played it, so I have to agree. (laughs) But I will say one thing. I will say one thing that we didn't actually slightly touch upon, but I think it's definitely worth it. I'm not a good artist. Yeah. I don't know about you, Simon. I don't know if, if this has encouraged you to take up drawing or or if you were a good artist from before that. Oh, no, I, I was awful. I still am awful, but it's 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 definitely made me want to try, and I'll doodle more in class now. I still get all my work done, but I'll doodle when, when we have a break, and it's it's inspired me, I think, to try, because it's, it's like anything you do, it looks great in the game. The painting mechanics is, is so versatile. There's so many different options that i think anyone if they really wanted to invest time could make amazing things which is where i was going to go because one of the interesting things is it doesn't judge you on what you do and what you draw oh yeah no that was that was a big thing in the um script i remember the uh the guy who wrote it was was like yeah we don't want to make we don't want to make the player feel discouraged we just want to be neutral or uplifting and that was that was a big point, and I remember that being a discussion and not wanting to sound downgrading. Oh, I remember we'd have to redo lines over and over again because I sounded too downgrading, <laughs> and it like it just had to be that perfect point where it wasn't offensive. I thought that was super cool. Mm, it's sort of a universal thing. There you go. Yeah, yeah. The other thing I suppose I did mention cons at the start. I would presume that you may get called to do cons at some point regarding the game. I hope you do, obviously. I can That'd imagine that there's going to be a few people out there, especially young adults, who will cosplay as Ash, you'd think, wouldn't you? Yeah, I hope so. I, I really want to see that, because people could get really creative. If they were really committed, they would find a way to have super paint also. Just anyone listening and is going to do a cosplay of Ash, just like, remember super paint, don't forget super paint. It's like super paint, do you want super paint? What is it? <laughs> but you want it, even though you don't know what it is. It's mm. great to have. And I think the, the best part, and this, this I thought, yes, yes, they've got this now. They've got me hooked now. Is the fact that there's parts of the game where it's sort of, I mean, the, the 
Lighthouse is a good example of this in the way that it, it pans back. And then I'm thinking, oh, this is going to be like some sort of scripted moment. And you're just looking at the lighthouse as it goes around. But actually what it's doing is it's showing you what you've done as sort of like a voyeur moment almost. They keep it as, as, as it is, as, as you've done it. At the very end, it's very satisfying. You get that pan back moment. They show you all your drawings and you're like, I remember drawing that an hour ago. I really like the team at Concrete Genie. They're all super cool. And I think they, they definitely thought about things like that. Like they didn't want to, they didn't want to take you out of the moment. They wanted you to be in there and enjoy it. What a great way to end the interview, Simon. (laughs) (laughs) It's been a pleasure. All's mine. Thank you so much. This was really fun. Mm. We'll have to get you back. See how you are and how you're doing. I hope there's a Comic Con sometime soon and they invite me. I would love to do that. I'm hoping Concrete Genie too. That would be awesome. <laughs> that would be cool too. First one's barely come out and you're already ready for the second. That's awesome. Thanks very much for your time, Simon. Awesome. Thanks for having me. Thanks very much. Bye-bye. Bye bye. Bye.